Broadcasting from the Golden Spread of Texas, this is The Fred Hughes Show. With each episode, we introduce to you an inspiring person or message to help you grow and unlock your potential in life. I'm Fred Hughes, professional photographer, pastor, teacher, author, and your show host. Thank you for joining us and welcome to this episode brought to you by the Faithful Partners of Decision Ministry. Well, hello, this is Fred Hughes, and uh, we just welcome you to another Thursday uh, live cast. And uh, we're just excited about being here and excited about uh, talking about the Word of God. So uh, if you can see on my screen, I have my one of my Aussie friends with me, Gary. Uh, we just uh, appreciate you so much, and uh, we're we're excited about tonight. We may have another guy or two jump in, but uh, we're going to just kind of discuss the um, um, the goodness of God tonight. And I think that's a really powerful subject. Sometimes we don't necessarily uh, consider um, often enough. I believe you know how good our God really, really is. And so it's kind of easy to get caught up in um, times where, you know, we're worried and we allow the, the frustrations of the, of, of the current day to uh, kind of override us. But, you know, the scripture says, whatever is good, whatever is wholesome, whatever is worthy and worthwhile to think about, think on these things. So we have the ability to think uh, on what we choose to think about. Aren't you glad we have that ability? That's a God-given ability. And so when we choose to think about God and how good he is in our life, it's really just giving him praise. It's really honoring him. It's really fellowshipping with him. And so it's, it's to me, it's a huge subject area that, and so we're going to kind of jump in and probably bounce a lot of scriptures off of you tonight, but uh, we're just going to uh, stop it a little, long enough to consider the goodness of God tonight. So I hope you'll join us. We have a ministry line that uh, we always have up during this meeting. It's uh, area code 806-338-2929. Uh, uh, we have people that speak Spanish or English. Uh, that can uh, pray with you, uh, minister to you. We have those, those folks are really well trained, really great ministers of the gospel. So uh, avail yourself of that number. Once again, 806 338 2929. That's an American number. So I've got an Aussie on with me this evening. So if somebody's over and listening to uh, uh, from, from, um, Australia, well, then that number is not going to work for you. <laughs> I'd like to have one, uh, uh, an international number. and Maybe we'll get that on down the road. Anyway, Gary, it's uh, exciting to have you. And, uh, and I understand you're back home with your lovely wife. Tell us about who you are and uh, what. Uh, give us some information about how we can, how people can connect with you. And you're, you have a great uh, one of these as well. And so uh, I'll let you have opportunity to share your, your info. Thanks, Fred. Uh, firstly, thank you very much for this opportunity to share the word of God with the people out there in the third dimension. Sorry, I just had to clean my throat. Yeah, we, uh, my wife Gloria and I have a ministry here in Australia. Uh, it's all via social media. Um, we use uh, Zoom as Fred does and uh, another platform called Restream. And uh, we minister out to about half a dozen platforms at simultaneously of each weekend with Grace Faith Christian Discipleship. Um, we use the acronym GFCD. It's GFCD Bible Studies. We have two of them every weekend and we minister to people out there in the third dimension. Good. Well, I'm glad that you're back home with uh, with your bride. So that's that's good. You've been traveling uh, around the country quite a bit. So tell us about some of your exploits. Well, the scene you can see in the back 
behind me here, Fred, is uh, actually a, it's a photo I took um, of a sunrise up in, where was it? It was in uh, the very, very north of Western Australia. Um, and so that's a sunrise, uh, a winter sunrise up there. Uh, it's quite spectacular. Uh, yeah. Right now I'm down in the southwest, the lower southwest. So the photo behind me, the temperatures were up around the 25 to 30 degrees during the day um, down here in the southwest because this is such a big state. It's quite cool. And as you can see, I'm rugged up. Um, being in the southern hemisphere, we're in the tail end of our winter. Um, we're just um, a few days and we hit the first day of spring, um, first of September. So, um, yeah, looking forward to that down here. I haven't acclimatized yet, um, but um, yeah, it's, it, it is great, great to be home with my wife in our, in our house here in Bunbury, Western Australia. Um, but I did miss, uh, I do miss the traveling in the, in the RV. We call them caravans over here. I think you guys call them trailers or RVs, but uh, same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we have, uh, we're, we're kind of at the end of uh, summer. We're fixing to uh, uh, school starting and, and, and uh, so all the little school kids are running around and, and, uh, but it's still quite warm here and we're, we're uh, we're all kind of looking for fall forward to fall, <laughs> so so uh, different ends of the world. So that's kind of kind of interesting fact that uh, we can sit here and talk with one another almost at uh, at a live level, and uh, it's fascinating to me the technology that's available today. It just enables us to be able to uh, put the gospel out further away. We have a lot of other things that compete with it. Uh, but uh, we have the airways uh, still uh, available to us, and I think that I thank God for that. So it's just uh, kind of time to be thankful. I, even though the world has lots of craziness going on, especially right now, and a lot of people that are just seemingly um, losing their mind, um, not not rational in their thinking. And uh, it's all about kind of controlling people, I think. And I know in Australia right now, y'all are in a big lockdown and uh, the COVID thing has just really taken on a mean turn over in your part of the world. Um, can you give us a little quick report about that? Yeah, uh, yeah, Fred, I think the, um, the media tend to sensationalize things and blow it out of all, all proportion because what they're wanting to do is sell media coverage you know the um and then over here we've got the um uh, the australian broadcasting commission which is uh heavily do dominated by left wing yeah so what we've got to be we've got to try and get a balance so um a show like this uh, fred hughes show uh where he's got a guest on we can give you a little bit of an an honest perspective because we've got no vested interest in trying to make money out of it um yeah there has been an, an outbreak of uh COVID in new south wales on the east coast of australia uh, at the moment uh what australia is doing is catching up with the immunization um and um people are fighting back against it uh in various places um it's um uh, gloria and i are of the opinion that it is a personal decision and um as to which way you go if god tells you to do it you know like um it takes me to the um the scripture that comes to my mind you remember the uh the um the waiters at the wedding and uh jesus was there and and the mother of jesus mary said to said to the waiters whatever he says do it yeah we need to be communicating with god over this and uh, whatever he says to us do it there you go that's a good so, way to... that's the way, that's the attitude that gloria and i have have taken um, over here in Western Australia, what they've done <clears throat> is they've absolutely locked down the borders. So 
we're the opposite to the east coast of Australia. If we didn't have news, we wouldn't even know that there was COVID in the country, you know. Oh. Uh, and Western Australia is probably, um, I don't know whether it's a third or a quarter of the size of the whole country, and Australia itself is equivalent size of America. But, you know, um, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of like bursting at the seams to get to the topic that we're talking about, Fred. And if I can just kick off with uh, one verse yeah, um, from James uh, chapter 1, verse 17. Every, I'll, I'll emphasize this word, every, every good and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variableness neither shadow of turning and that's another part to be highlighted god never changes he only has good and he only has perfect gifts so whether it's in the spirit or in the natural if it is good it's coming from god amen back amen. over to you back over to you fred yeah amen to that that's that's a grand uh, observation right there, because uh, it, it's, it talks about the father of lights. And, you know, um, light is good. Uh, we were my wife and I was looking at a little plant and, you know, the, they, they turn toward the sun, you know, and even in, even the ivy or the or the little flowers or anything, it, it, it turns toward that the light and because the light is life. And life is in the light. And it says for every good thing, that scripture says, every good thing comes from the father of lights. Wow. You know, life is in that light. And so every, every good thing comes from him. And so I, that is just yeah. such a powerful observation to me. Even, even the, little, the little plants turn their face toward that light, you know. Play. We sing a song or two about, you know, turn your face toward Jesus and uh, emulate those little plants, you know, and, and to expect to build the expectation of one day seeing and meeting him face to face. That is that should well up a great expectancy and hope in any believer's heart. Yeah, the goodness of God, the goodness of God. And you know, I, I don't, I try, I try to stick with um, the New Testament because we're New Testament saints, but, you know, all scripture is given for, um, for reproof, for learning, for, you know, so all, all scripture we can learn from. And the goodness of God, I'm, I'm going to Jeremiah 29 verse 11, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. So this is the Lord God. For I know the thoughts that I think to, towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace. How much do we want peace in a troubled world today? Yeah. Peace. Peace in our lives. Peace, not turmoil. We can have that. And if you are a born-again Christian, you should already have that. You know, but... You know, the, the gifts of God come to us by grace, but we have to grasp them by faith because it's a balance of grace and faith. Let me get back to Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil. We're living in an evil time, folks. We're in a world that's fallen. It's an evil time. What we see going on around us at the moment, all this COVID, COVID stuff, this is not from God. This is from the pit of hell. It is evil. Absolutely. And we need to deal with it. And it goes on here. It says, to give you an expected end. Do you know that, that verse, uh, Jeremiah 29 verse 11, that in itself is good news yes it is 
Yes, it is indeed, man. That, that is um, what I would consider the best news out there. <laughs> just... Yeah, Fred, the, you know, uh, my observation is that Christians have trouble. Like somebody asked me, you know, um, okay, so if I just resist the devil, um, uh, will he flee from me? You know, if I just resist the devil. And my answer to him was, well, it depends what you mean by resist the devil. It depends what you mean. Because most Christians, I'm not talking about the world, most Christians are actually assisting the devil rather than resisting the devil. Yeah. You see, and the way you do that is the words that you speak out of your mouth. You've got to speak the words, the word of God. You've got to speak the word to your situation. You know, I think it was Kenneth Hagen, Hagen said, you can, you can say what you have or you can have what you say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you John know, 10, 10. John 10.10 10 says, the thief yes the thief who's the thief i'm asking the people in the third dimension who's the thief satan the devil the thief cometh not these are the words of jesus john 10 10 the thief mm. cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy jesus went on to say but i am come that they might have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Yeah. So to me, this tells me who, what the source is for what's coming in our life. Yeah. Our topic is the goodness of God. If it's good, it's from... it doesn't matter whether it's spiritual or whether it's in the natural. If it's good, it's from God. That's right. If it's coming to steal, to kill and to destroy, it's from the enemy, the thief, Satan. Yeah. Yeah. Back to you, Fred. Well, it's uh, and together with what you started with, uh, what what you get into agreement with with your mouth is is what is the seed that you're sowing into it. So if you're agreeing with the, a good God, Psalms twenty five eight says, "Good and upright is the Lord." So if something is good and upright, it's from the Lord. And so if it comes out of your mouth, if you're professing good things, if you're declaring the goodness of God, if you're declaring good things over your children and over your household and over your body and over your finances and over all of the things, if you're speaking these things, then the good harvest is going to return to you because it's he the goodness of God is welling up out of your spirit coming up out of the mouth it says as the mouth at, at, uh, when scripture talks about uh, you know out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks and that is uh, the word of if we load it up with the word of God will speak the things that will produce kingdom results in our life and if we load it up with the world stuff uh, we'll begin to speak what the world has to offer and we'll get that kind of a harvest back again. And so how we, what we say, how did, how we declare the goodness of God affects us, affects our life, affects our family, affects everything in our life as well. So it says in um, Psalms 23, six, just says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Well, that's a great confession to make, but it's also a practice to step into uh, the goodness of God is should be on our lips. It should be, you know, uh, we mm. should be full of mercy and full yeah. of love and full yeah, of the things just, of God. And if that's so, then they will follow us. And there'll be blessing in our life, no matter what's going on in the world or how bad the enemy seems to be winning or how weird the situations get. I've got good news for you. God still got it all under control and we win. <laughs> yeah. 
you know, surely goodness and mercy, sure. that word surely, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. It's not, it's not, look, we have to lay hold of it. Mm -hmm. I'm pointing, I'm pointing this out to the people in the third dimension. It says surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of our, our life. Do you know that not, if you look at Christian lives around the place, not everyone is living the dream, you might say, mm -hmm. or the vision. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of life. We all know Christians who don't fit that bill. Yeah. Why? You've got to lay hold of it. Mm -hmm. And you lay hold of it with the words out of your mouth. That's what we've been talking about. You see, um, <clears throat> what's it say? It says, uh, I haven't got the address of it, but it says death and life are in the power of the tongue. Mm -hmm. It's talking about our tongue. Yeah. It's not talking about Satan's tongue. Death and life are in the power of our tongue, and they that love it will eat the fruit of it. Really? Or eat the fruit thereof. Now, mm -hmm. what that means is the things that you speak over yourself, it says, the Bible says, submit to God, will be in submission to his um word what does his word say about you who you are in christ have a look at colossians have a look at ephesians mm -hmm. they're the two uh, bible books that tells us who we are in christ they're both split into two sections the first half of ephesians tells you who you are in christ and the second half tells you how to walk in that authority mm -hmm. um, the first half of colossians tells you the preeminence of god and the second half tells us again how to walk in that, how to how to live it out, mm. how how to God needs to be preeminent in our life, yeah. and you know, the, Gloria and I have been talking about this, Fred, just recently. We just like, and and don't take this as a negative. We're going, you know, we are the Lords, regardless of the situation. Life as we knew it three years ago, 10 years ago, was almost seems like a fantasy world. Yeah. Um, life here on the earth. Life here on the earth is not the same today as it was even three years ago. That's true. And, That's true. you know, it. we have come to the conclusion that, um, oh, conclusion's not even the, the right word for it, um, we, Gloria and I have been talking about it. it. Look, it doesn't matter to the extent that it doesn't matter whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. Amen. We were purchased with a price. We are the Lord's. Here's a good God. You know, we can't lose for winning. Absolutely. Can't lose for winning because we have got that hope. We have got that future. Mm hmm we have got, we have already laid hold of eternal life yeah. here in this world. Not, it's not pie in the sky. It's here right and now. Yes. And you know, we're doing, yes, we've got to do the practical things uh, around the house and in our lives just to sustain life here on the earth. Mm -hmm. But the, everything is just t so temporal. You've got to get your f mind focused you know, um, mind focused on the eternal things. It says, the Bible says in Romans 12, 2, um, let me just go there. Uh, you, you want to, I'll just find Romans 12, 2. I don't want to yeah, misquote it. Well, uh, while, while you're going there, let me only, uh, uh, 1 John uh, 4, 17 says, as he is talking about Jesus, so are we in this world that means right now we have the same holy spirit indwelling us and empowering us as he had when he was walking the face of the earth and so it the things we have are so full so rich i mean we have the gifts of the spirit we have the um the fruit of the spirit we have the fullness of the word of god in our hands we have you know 
something that can chase down the scripture you're think, trying to come up with quickly. I mean, we have so many good things. Uh, I'm reminded of your your verse earlier in James 117. It's, uh, it's talking about every good thing, every good perfect thing comes down from from uh, the Father of love. And he's, it, it says, there's no shadow of turning. He's not going to change. He hasn't changed. He never changes. He never will change. He, he's the same. And so whenever we get a picture, we need to go to the book of Revelation and get a picture of who what he looks like now, not, not back when he was in the crib at Christmas time, but we need to get a picture of that white ha hair, that fiery eyes, the sword, the um, you know, coming out of his mouth, slashing. <laughs> we need to the 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 commander in chief of the army of God. <laughs> you know? That's who we are. That's who we look like to the devil, and he's got us so duped, thinking that we're nothing and we can't do anything, and we're tirelessly, impossibly hopeless. No, that's not who we are, not who we are at all. And so the goodness of God is the revelation of who we are in Christ Jesus. I mean, that's, if you just start thinking about how good he is, let him reveal himself to you, to you, then you're going to begin to speak the things of God and see the power of God flowing through you and into other people and into your situations and you see success, not defeat. Um, I'm sorry, go back to Roman. Yeah, thanks, Fred. Um, yeah, while you were speaking, I, I, it's just like, you know, you can, I, I really want to try and um, share testimony if I can and to let people see rather than us just being, you know, quoting a whole bunch of scripture, not that there's nothing, not, not I've been done plenty of that the, this morning myself or this evening, depending where you are watching in the world, but, um, you know, lives, lives need to be changed for the better by hearing the word of God. Amen. And that's what Fred's bringing to you week in, week out um of a thursday evening at 7 p.m in your neck of the word uh, world fred it's 8 8 a.m here on a fr on a friday morning actually sure. <laughs> so yeah but lives need to be changed for the better by the hearing of the word of god absolutely now not just change for change's sake now the practical example that i wanted to give you is that our lives, you think about our life, you know, we're not of this world, but we are in this world. And when you really think about our world that we live in, every single aspect of it changes from day to day, from moment to moment, like even the cells in our body are replaced. I don't know how how often they're replaced. You'd have to have to be a medical person, but I know that they're being replaced. <laughs> Nothing stays the same. Nothing. If you want to go for the only constant that we have, the only constant, then you have to turn to the Word of God. You know, Jesus said. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. You know, that's good. We can hold on to the promises of God because though we change and we grow in the knowledge of him, he never changes. So, uh, we say, we you know, that the Holy Spirit is is uh leading us well he is leading us because we are the ones you know we are the ones that are playing catch up you know the the bible to us is a progressive revelation it's not that god is progressive we're progressive 
Uh, and I'll just jump back to Romans 12, verse 2. Um, and we're, we're focused here. The topic that Fred has chosen for today is the goodness of God. And you go, well, Romans 12, verse 2, I know what that's talking about. It's talking about my soulish mind. Yeah, okay, so you know that. But have a look at it. Really, really, I want you to see something in this. Romans 12, verse 2. And see, this is for the person who is saved. What does the word saved mean? It means you've got your ticket to heaven. It means you are born again. Jesus said, you must be born again. And when that's not the topic of this morning, but I just wanted to bring that out. So when you get born again, you are born again. You, Jesus paid the price at the cross for the redemption of our spirit, our soul, and our body. That's right. Body, we, we, you know, Jesus was raised from the dead, but guess what? We're also raised from the dead. He was the first of the, of the, um, uh, what's, it, what's it say, Fred? Um, it doesn't say born again. It says um, the first of the firstborn. Firstborn. Widow. That's the way it's worded. Yeah, he was the firstborn from the dead. That's the way it's worded. So we are. <coughs> Our spirit, the moment we make Jesus our Lord and Savior, we are born again, right? And our spirit is 100% perfect. So you don't grow your spirit. I want to clarify something. You're not growing your spirit, but you need to feed on spiritual food. Why? For your mind, for your soulish realm, for your soulish mind. And it tells us this here really clearly in Romans 12, verse 2. And do not be conformed to this world, even though you're living in this world, you're not to be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. Transformed. It's talking about your soul, not your spirit. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Well, how do you renew, renew, renew your mind? By reading the word of God. It's effortless change. You'd read it consistently. It's not the length of time that you read the Bible. It's the consistency. I believe it should be daily. Yeah. Um, and be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove. What are you going to prove? What is that good? We're talking about the goodness of God. What is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You're going to prove it. How are you going to prove it? You're going to live it out in your life. Your life is going to be changed for the better yes. by the word of God. If you renew your mind, your spirit's already perfect, but your mind needs to be removed, renewed. Why? Yes. That you may prove. What is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? Amen. Amen. Amen to that. Hey, you know, there's a, a, a statistic that I heard the other day that would, that comes into play right here. There, uh, we're talking about reading the Word of God, and I heard this. It was either George Barner. I don't. I'm not really going to attribute it to somebody because I can't remember the reference. But they did a study. And they found out that it, you know, it's like they asked Christian believers, um, like if they read or studied the word of God at least once a week, um, would it make any change in their life? And that would include like going to church and hearing a preacher or whatever. And there wasn't even a blip on the, on, on the line there, you know. And so two times a week, they asked. And there was just a just a little bounce somewhere in there, but not very much. Three times a week, there really actually was a little bit of a blip. Four times a week, it went through the roof, went straight up the chart, off of the chart. It was and and it was just such a huge discovery. Four times a week, and it makes a huge difference in in person. They re, redid. They run another survey of those people, and found out that their life, their marriages were better, their businesses were better, their finances were better. Everything 
was better in their life because they had read the word at least four times a week seriously. That is, I mean, that is phenomenal to me. <laughs> Some, it, that is pretty impressive statistically um, that it that it just goes off the chart uh, with some consistency, even just four times a week when you get into the word a little bit. That isn't that amazing? Yeah, it sure is, Fred. Um, I'm I'm looking at First John. Uh, where is it? One five. Then this is the message which we have heard from him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. God is light. God is light and God is life. The Bible uses the word light and life interchangeably yes. uh, when it refers to God. And, you know, we're talking this morning about the goodness of God. And, and, and I just want to uh, reinforce that God never changes that he is he is your rock that steadfast um in such uncertain times he is the only the only thing that we've got that brings us a hope and a future and because you know we haven't fulfilled the commission that jesus has given us and you know it talks about you know why do you hope for things that you've already you've already seen um well we haven't seen out the rest of our life but we can read about it in the word of god and we can uh, we can have confidence and and faith and biblical hope biblical hope is not the hope of this world which is like i'm a hoping and a wishing that things are going to work out okay no Biblical hope is a hope based on the expectancy. It's like being pregnant and you are going to give birth. You haven't given birth yet, but you have this expectancy of what God has got ahead for you, even in these troubled, troubled times that we're living in, Fred. Yeah. Yeah, you know, the um, Psalms 143 10 just says, teach me, you know, it's David crying out, teach me uh, to, um, it says, teach me to know your will. Well, we have the word of God to tell us exactly what the will of God is, that he wrote it down for us. And so all we have to do is reference that, you know, I'm, I get tickled sometimes at people that will pray, well, if it's the will of God, you know, and, or if God wills, you know, well, this, that, and the other. Uh, but he's written it down for us is the, the word of God is the will of God. And so when we learn it, digest it, get it inside of us, begin to profess it, speak it and live it, we are operating fully in the will, the perfect will of God. And we are led, it says, be led by the spirit. So not only do we have the, the testimony of his word, but we have the spirit of Jesus indwelling us and interpreting and reminding us of that word as we go through life. And so it, the, the things we have available to us, I just think of the goodness of God because he has given us all of these things. He has given us his will. He's given us perfect understanding of that will by his spirit. He has given us the gifts of the spirit. I mean, all of the, just think of all of the things that we have that the disciples and even the old um, um, prophets and, and, uh, and those guys back there, they didn't have what we have. We, we live in a new covenant, a better covenant, uh, more abundant things that are going they looked forward they they could see it they could look into the future and see it and and they desired to have what we have unfortunately today we live in the present and can't see it but we have it that's to me the, the most 
frustrating part portion is we have it, but we don't see it. They could see it, but they didn't have it. So what a what a flip flop in uh, in that realm as far as but can I ask you a question, Fred? Yes. Um, the word here in Psalm 34 verse eight says, Oh, taste and see yeah. the Lord is good. Mm. But it goes on to say, blessed is the man that trusteth in him. My question for you, Fred, is the people out yeah, in the third dimension, how do they taste and see that the Lord is good? You know, I, we, I was kind of thinking about this the other day, and um, one of the one of the things that I believe God has given us is holy communion, the ability to, uh, here's Dennis and Strong coming in with, uh, the ability for us actually to, uh, Jesus told his disciples, hi, Dennison. Welcome in. Hello. Um, but Jesus. Sorry, I'm late. Nah, no problem. Jesus told us exactly how, you know, what he wanted us to do to partake of. He said, do this in remembrance of me. And so to partake of him, uh, there's no better picture of that than, than communion. He said, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you'll have no part of me. In other words, we have to partake of him. Well, he's spirit. So we have to partake of him spirit um, by the spirit rather than by our head knowledge. It's, you know, we do the juice and the crackers to bring up the, the pitcher, but it's a spiritual exercise of receiving, taking him into us. And Jesus himself said that I and the Father are one. In other words, he, he said, he, he told the Sadducees and the Pharisees one time, he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father because we're the same. And then he turns right around and he says, you and I are one. He's talking to his disciples and he's talking to us whenever he's addressing his disciples because we are his disciples as well. But whenever we look to Jesus, that scripture I quoted a while ago, 1 John 4, 17, it just, it says, as he was, is, as he is now, seated at the, at the right hand of the Father, ruling and reigning by the Father, the side of the Father. In, in actuality, we are seated by him seated in the heavenlies with him, the scripture says. So how can Amen. we be in two places at one time? That's kind of a hard question. But to partake of him, to be one with him, as, even as the Father in heaven is one with him, that's, that's what he gave us the power to become as sons of God. Abil the ability to, to know him intimately. That is the partaking. That's how we receive it. How do we do that? We read the word. We study the word. We discover in there what it's like to be with him. How Amen. to worship What a great him. answer, Fred. Do with him. So that's, that's my opinion. Yeah. That's a great answer, Fred. Hey, Fred, is uh, are you monitoring uh, who's watching on? I'm getting messages coming up on, on my mobile phone to say that Pauline's making comments. Hi, Pauline. Hi, Pauline. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, hey, I'm, hey I'm Dennison. How you going, mate? I wish I had somebody in here that could do that. So that's that's awesome. But yeah, we have some folks that, that uh, watch in and, and we also convert this over to a um, podcast and uh, try to put that out shortly after uh, we get through here and you can go to Spotify, you can go to iTunes, you can go to um, Pandora, you can, I mean, there's a ton of places that you can go and just listen to the audio every, every week after we get through. So it goes out to a lot of different places and a lot of different folks can access it. So we thank you for your prayer and your support of um, what we're doing. 
and share it with people. Punch those little buttons and share the YouTube, you know, and uh, all of that. That that helps us broaden it out and to reach more people. Denison, what are you up to, young man? Oh, it's been awesome here in total lockdown. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, God's just been enriching me with his word and, and uh, relationship with him. It's been, it's been awesome. And uh, helping, helping fix up the place here for the owner and uh, where we live, mm -hmm. doing a lot of touch up things. Fixing, repairing, whatever, you know. So combined with that, but mostly I'm working on my book. I, it looks like I'm going to be able to get it into ebook within, I'd say within a couple of weeks, wow. given, given the COVID restrictions here and, and how much contact we can be with one another. But I've got a pastoral excuse now to go out and visit. <laughs> That's so. great. That's pretty cool. We've been talking about the goodness of God and, you know, you've experienced a lot of uh, healing and, and the miraculous in your life. And give us a few testimonies of just uh, oh. when you've seen God's goodness just revealed in somebody's life. You know, it says the goodness of God leads men to repentance. It's yeah. and healing and miraculous things seem to be kind of the dinner bell to salvation in a lot sure. of instances. So share some of um, some yeah. things that you've seen along that line. Well, two of them come to mind because I've been going through uh, two chapters. One was about a lady in India that had metal plates across her back or lower back because she had broken her back and hips and stuff, falling down some stairs. The other one is about three women in Mexico City. This was back in the 80s, but I remember it very well in the big auditorium that I was preaching in. They all had an issue with blood and God had impressed upon my heart and insisted that I teach on the woman with an issue of blood which is recorded in all three Gospels, but it's got some great lessons on faith. She heard about Jesus. She thought in her mind about touching the hem of his garment, and then she acted on that. She approached him, though she was hiding from the, the officials and the crowd that was around him because she was unclean in their, in their uh, law, in the Old Testament law and couldn't be in public. But she said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I, I will be healed. She touched the hem of his garment and virtue in one translation and strength in another flowed out of Jesus. And he recognized it, he knew it. He looked around, and he said, who you know, like who touched me? And then she saw that she was found out and she told him uh, what had happened. And he said, there's three things there. He says are really, distinguishing in this particular case he never called anybody else this he said daughter meaning she was a daughter of god abraham and his sister and he said daughter or you know offspring <laughs> it's a very intimate term the way he uses it there though he says daughter your faith has made you well not mine it wasn't me that healed you it was your faith that healed you go in peace and uh, I, I just, it's just such a beautiful story. Her life was radically changed. She'd had this condition for 12 years, was unable to go to the temple and worship, was unable to go into public places. And she was, she was isolated like us. So the other three uh, were related to this miracle. And uh, there's three women in that Mexican church, or I mean, not church, it was a revival that I was preaching in. I gave an invitation at that meeting for any women with an issue of blood, which was really bold there. It's, uh, I just, man, I can't believe I'm asking for this, but I've got to. Does there happen to be any, any woman here with an issue of blood? And you would be so bold and courageous to raise your hand. I'm gonna ask everybody to you know, close their eyes. So three women all scattered out around that 
congregation or mob, I guess, or whatever you want to call it, and raised their hands. So I said, would you mind coming down here in front? And I, as I put my hand on each of them, they just, you know, they, they just became weak and, and fell into the power of the Holy Spirit. But I said, and while they're down on the floor, I said, Are, would there happen to be any medical people here, doctors, nurses that can examine these women to confirm that God has indeed healed them? Two people in the back, a man and a woman in the back, way in the back, raised their hand. And I said, okay, would you? And so when the ladies got up, I said, go back to those two people standing back there. The ushers will guide you and they'll examine you if you want. We want to confirm what God's done. Well, a few minutes later, they walked out of this room in the back and they're waving their hands. It, we're healed, we're healed, you know? And, and uh, so God had strategically planned that, told me what to preach on, told this doctor, these two, and they were gynecologists. And they were the only medical professionals in the crowd. Yeah. And had they came from Veracruz, Mexico, all the way to Mexico City to attend this crusade to just see what Denison was going to do, <laughs> or, or God, I should say. But they want, they'd want heard about me, and they, they wanted to come visit. So that was back in the 80s. Let's bounce forward about five years ago. I'm up in India, and I'm preaching for this a uh, lady who's a pastor of a church there that she was sent from in 2000, I think it was 15 or so. She was sent back from Dubai because God had spoken to her. She'd gotten saved there. He said, go and start a church in, in your neighborhood. So she came back. She started this church. It's a pretty good sized little church. At the end of the meeting, everybody had cleared out. And I'm sitting down with the pastor and her husband. We're visiting. And a woman came through the back that had been in the meeting. Her name is Alfonso. And uh, she came walking up to us. She said, say, I, 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 I've been walking, but I, I, I feel I'm supposed to come back and ask you to pray for me. And I said, what's wrong? She said, I've got two big metal plates across the lower back, bolted into my hips. And she told her story. And um, I said, OK. So I prayed for her. She, bam, she hit the floor. And I thought, oh, boy, either that's really going to hurt or it's the Holy Spirit. <laughs> you know, which one is it? So, so anyway, when she got up, uh, she felt her back and she said, the, the plates are gone. And I said, Pastor, and I asked the pastor to go over and put her hands on her back. She said, there's no plates here. And she said, but you know what? She said, the bolts are still in my hips. I said, well, God will take those out, too, if he takes the plates out, you know. <laughs> and so I prayed. and. She said, they're gone too. And she gets down. She's rolling around on the floor, twisting in all different directions, bumping up against things to see if, you know, she said, they're gone. She said, I'm healed. And so <laughs> those are two outstanding testimonies that I like to share with people just on, on the spot here. So yeah, look, I could look. share more, but I don't want to take it any more time here. Oh, that's that's neat. That's neat. We, uh, Irene and I experienced uh, something like that when we were in Russia uh, one time. We had um, we had an interpreter that was they were a husband and a wife, and both of them were physician in Russia under you know the socialist regime and whatnot. Uh, the the taxi cab drivers actually made more money than the doctors did there. So, so the doctors were interpreting for us and we were having signs and ones and miracles happening uh, around us. And, and uh, they were able to kind of confirm some of the things and, and verify. And so it's, it's, it's so God, uh, it's so like God to, and it's the good <coughs> God that, that he puts things together that, that just, we don't know how in the world that could have ever happened, but he had foreordained it. He had planned it before the beginning of the of, of the earth, probably. So yeah, you know, he's got good plans for us. Let me let me share um, at Psalms thirty one. I wanted to kind of get to this one because I think it's relevant for right now. Oh, how great is your goodness, Lord. Uh, this is David, and he wrote many of the Psalms. I really love his heart coming from, you know, uh, this perspective. Oh, how great is your goodness, 
which you have laid up for those who fear you. You know, if you don't fear God, if you don't have a, a respect for him, for his word, mm. for the things of God, he, he's not going to have much to do with you and you, nor you with him. And so it, there is a healthy fear and understanding of how great he really is and how good he really truly is that, that produces a godly fear in us. That's just, that's awesome. It says, which you have prepared for those who trust in you in the presence of the sons of men. And, you know, our heart needs to be right, because when we step into the presence of other human beings, not everybody's following God's heart. Not everybody's full of the goodness of God. Not everybody has a good plan for your life. Uh, they have they have some some stuff, and I know that some of the Americans are and and some of the other people that were in Kabul that are now facing you know um, they they can't get out of the country and they're facing situations where they could possibly lose their life just simply because they have some dealing with with Christ, with Jesus you know, but it says you shall hide them in secret places. Of your, of your presence from the plots of men. You shall keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of the tongue. Man, I mean, that, that's Psalms uh, 31, 19, and 20. Man, it, to, to, to me, it's a, it's a now word that, that people, that we can go to those secret places. Mm -hmm. That and and that secret place really is the presence and power and spirit of God. It's that secret place is the word of God, which which holds us in in uh, you know in in the truth. And it's that truth that sets us free. So when we wrap ourselves, clothe ourselves, feed on the presence and power of the word of God, uh, it. It's that secret place we need to be. It's when our ears tune in. You know, the Bible, in my opinion, is like a tuning fork. It, it sounds just like the voice of God. So if you hit that tuning fork, put it up next to you, you can know where middle C is exactly. And that's yeah. the same way with the word of God. When you put the word of God up next to your ear and then the voice of God hits your spirit, you know, that's him. It says, my sheep will follow my voice and no other voice will they follow, but mine. That's, it's a tuning fork. It sets your ear, your spiritual ears on the true voice of God so that you can hear him, be led by him, be encouraged by him, be directed by him, be loved by him, be everything supplied by him. I mean, it, it has everything to do with everything. And man, a lot of Christians don't have a clue. Yeah. You know, Fred, uh, scripture that I woke up, when I woke up early this morning, uh, there was a, a passage or a part of a passage that God was speaking into my heart. He said, choose life. That's mm -hmm. just a piece of it, but it comes from Deuteronomy 30, verse 19 and 20. He said, I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. And we see both of those things set before us right now in the world we live in. Mm -hmm. Uh, life and death therefore choose life mm -hmm. that both you and your descendants may live that you may love the lord your god like you were saying that you may obey his voice which you know i had a friend or he's an evangelist missionary and he one time he came to our church in up in oregon he said you know denny brother denny he said he was from the south brother denny he said I hear my father's voice and a stranger's I will not listen to. <laughs> and uh, I just love that the way he said that. And that stuck in my mind from back in the seventies, late in the 79, that you may love the Lord and may obey his voice, that you may cling to him. 
you know, that's another aspect of partaking in him is just clinging to him. And uh, for he is your life and the length of your days and that you may dwell in the land, promised land, promises of God, which the Lord swore to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So I just, you know, that to me this morning, waking up with that, I, I was just, I got, I got thrilled. I said, Lord, you've, there's life and death out here. I get to choose life. I don't have to choose to listen to the liars and the voices out there that are, you know, trying to confuse us and put fear in us and uh, intimidate us and, uh, you know, manage or control our lives. Oh, praise God. We don't have to give into that. Or at least, you know, in our hearts, we can, you know, surrender to God, believe him and choose the life of Christ, which you know, we can choose in this, we get to choose life or death, which I include in life, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. To me, that's, that's life. That's all that's worth my living now is to live in his righteousness and proclaim his goodness and righteousness throughout all the earth. Wherever the Lord opens the doors, I will go boldly. Yeah. So, yeah. Amen. Amen. Brother it's Gary, a choice every day. Yeah, we do. We indeed do, Brother Gary. We, uh, I, I was just, I was just reflecting on what you were talking about from Romans a while ago, and and uh, you know, the the goodness of God manifests in our life so many ways. Uh, so so often we are a little dull. And we miss a lot of those things that kind of fly by us, but they're real blessing. You know, I, was, I had the scripture a while ago about, you know, at the, the, every, every promise of God is, is yes and amen. You know, every, uh, just the goodness of God are, is just impacted in his blessings. Um, mm -hmm. Can you shed a little light on that for us? Yeah, thanks, Fred. Uh, the goodness of God. I, I'm just listening to uh, Denison, and um, uh, I'm just like, wow, what a testimony this minister of the gospel has. And I've got a question for you, Denison. Um, sure. But, but let me lead into it first, um, because I, 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 the way the way I see it is. God, like, you got to remember that we're only here on this planet Earth for a short period of time. Like, yeah. whether you live 25 years, whether you live 125 years, on compared with eternity, it's a snap of your fingers. Amen. Yes. And, yes. and all of us, A-double-L, -L, there's not one who are going to escape physical death. No. Right. Yeah. Right. So, you know, God wants to demonstrate. You know, Gloria and I were talking. You know, it doesn't matter whether we live or whether we die. We are the Lord's. We are purchased. We we've got an eternal destination in heaven. I mean, we've got we've got eternal life right now. We're actually living eternal life right mm -hmm. life right now, but we're not yet in heaven. We've got we've got eternity to spend with the Lord in the heaven. But you know what? For a a lost and dying world, God wants to demonstrate his goodness. And the topic today is the goodness of God. Mm -hmm. And I can see God demonstrating his goodness through Denison's ministry, like just so greatly. You know, mm -hmm. have you heard the testimony that Denison <laughs> brings to us about these healings? He's like, he speaks to it, and it's almost. So I'm, I'm don't mean to be rude, but you're like speaking about plates out of people's back, like flippantly. It's just like it's an everyday <laughs> occurrence in your ministry, Dennis. And well, every time I hear about it, it's like, wow. Now, the, I'm, I'm leading up to a question for you, Dennis, and it's pro we probably, you know, you probably might might want to do a whole hour with Dennis to answer this question. Because I believe that through Denison's ministry, 
God is demonstrating his goodness yes. through healing miracles. Healing miracles. Healing. Healing. Okay, here's my question, and you probably haven't got time to answer it in this session, Denison. My question to you, Denison, is simply this. Are you healing by faith, or are you operating no. in the gift of healings and working of miracles? That's a, that's a good question. I, I have been weighing that very question as I've written this book. Um, you know, sometimes, Gary, when I'm standing before people and preaching the word, you know, I, I'm not this giant of faith, so to speak, but I, and sometimes I'm surprised by what I am doing by asking people come forward and saying, God will heal you. I didn't used to give invitations that way. I would say, come on up and you know, we'll pray for you. But I left it at that because I thought, well, who, who, I don't know where they're at. I don't know what their faith level is. I, you know, at the time, I wasn't sure God would heal them because I, I'd never seen anything like what I've seen in the last eight, 10 years. Now, that given, you asked the question about, is it the gift of faith, uh, which is one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit? the gift of miracles, the gifts of healings. And there's different kinds of healings even. But I believe it's a combination of all three. I really believe, you know, just like when I begin to speak in tongues, it's by faith that I'm praying to God. So all of the gifts of the, of the Holy Spirit, I believe, in order to act on them, five of them are vocal gifts, which takes a lot of faith for people to stand up and give a message in tongues or an interpretation or even a prophecy or a word of knowledge or word of wisdom. Now, sometimes when God gives me a word of knowledge, I know for certain, without a doubt, God's going to heal somebody with that condition. Mm. Yeah. When, and it's not necessarily something I've spoken to the public or to the assembly, that word of knowledge, but I, I just know that having foreseen that in my spirit and heard God say something about it, I know it's going to come to pass. It's almost like what Fred mentioned about the, the promises of God are with it, you know, are yes and amen. So let's go back to faith, gift of miracles and gifts of healing. Sometimes the healing happens so rapidly, you have to put it in the category of a miracle. Because there's in our thinking, there's no recovery process. It's go home and, you know, God's going to heal you. And then gradually they get better or just maybe down the road a few days or weeks. They come to me and say, hey, you remember praying for me? Yeah, I'm, I'm healed. It's gone. Well, praise God. That was that was more of kind of a combination of healing miracles. But some of these things are absolutely miracles. They're, they're inconceivable in man's mind. They, you know, raising someone from the dead, pray for a man that's laying there dying with a brain tumor and he isn't breathing, but he's not moving at all. His eyes are closed, he's turning gray. And I just assumed the guy was dead and barely laid hands on him and he jumps up off the gurney, runs around the auditorium. This is in Kampala, Uganda. How, how just shouting hallelujah praise god you know all around that auditorium the the crowd went nuts because they all knew about this guy in their city anyway <clears throat> that the, those miracles it's a gift of miracles that god has probably assigned to me i'm not questioning that the same with the gift of healing i was told that in 1970 that god has given me the gift of healing and uh <clears throat> Then there's the faith aspect. And I think we can, you know, continually build up our faith. My faith right now, I'm using so much of my faith right now just to survive the onslaught of the buffeting from Satan that's coming against me because of all the things I'm seeing in the scriptures. I mean, it's like hell on earth. The emotional torment that he inflicts upon me sometimes. I'm just going, 
in, and I start quoting the scripture, and you know that the word is light, and it just begins to dispel that darkness within seconds, few minutes or so. I'm just like on top of the world. So that, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, which I believe is the spoken word. We've got to get it out of our mouth or on our tongue and speak it, declare it. When we do that, our mind hears it and begins to develop faith for the moment. Yeah. So those, I don't know if that helps at all, Gary, but there is a combination of all three when I'm operating in those meetings. I can tell also another gift that comes, and I call it a gift, is I feel compassion. It's, it's tangible. You can taste it. You can feel it inside of your, you know, your whole body. I just feel this compassion. And I'll wrap my arms around someone and look at them and they say, wow, I'm healed. And so there's this compassion that I feel. And I began feeling it when I was in Mexico about four or five, five years ago, when there was a, a man and woman or yeah, their family, they brought this little boy up and uh, he'd been burned severely in his body and his upper body it was from his neck down. He was burned horribly. And so but he couldn't move his arms. He couldn't extend his arms. He couldn't move his body this way or that. And uh, I just laid hands on him and I said, OK, Lord, make his body like it was before the before the burns. Now, this is an interesting one. God didn't take the burn scars away, but God liberated his body and made those scars as flexible as regular skin. I mean, it was just an immediate miracle. And he ran out to play soccer with the boys out in the front of the church. So that was compassion and faith and the gift of miracles combination. I think God can work in a combination. I believe he does. I've, I, I'm, I, I've seen it. I see it all the time. Or not recently here in Australia. Australians are kind of an interesting lot. And I don't want to condemn them or anything, but there is a resistance to the supernatural and, and the, what Smith Wigglesworth prophesied about this land. It, there, there seems to be something that's stopping it. I'm on, I'm on a long fast right now. And uh, I'm asking God, God, show me what to do here or if I'm supposed to go back to the States and resume my ministry there at this very moment. I've talked to Fred about this, but uh, I feel that. And I've had a lot of Australians in church tell me that, yes, you're right. There is a resistance. There is something like just, there's something, a barrier or something. So there's, Fred. There's, yeah. There's, there's a, there's a resistance to, um, you know, uh, the gospel getting out and uh, and the miraculous okay. happening anywhere you go, it really doesn't matter. But this, but God never changes. He's exactly the same anywhere and everywhere. Yeah. We yeah. build up in our minds these um, can'ts or don'ts or won'ts or whatever. But that's the reason why I think um, uh, that we started out talking about the goodness of God. And whenever you... Yeah. Whenever you look at the goodness of God, God gives good gifts to his children. If, if you yeah. being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more does the heavenly father know how to give you, his children, good gifts? So for me um, to kind of answer, uh, put my little two cents worth in on what Gary was asking is God is love. That's what he's made of. That's his nature. That is his, that is his domain. And so whenever you look at the goodness of God, it is because he is good. And you start reading in your, in your scriptures. That's why I put book after book after book, um, you know, example, 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 just like we've been testi testifying of what we've seen God do. Um, he, he, he fills that book. He filled that book with examples uh, that yeah. everyone can see the goodness of God working to heal, to set free, to do this, to do that, uh, um, to 
just the the graciousness of God to come, the glory of God that falls yeah. falls and makes you know touches men's body, makes things new. And so He's given us all of these gifts. He's given us these whole full set of examples to build our expectation. And then I mm-hmm. uh, go back to First John four seventeen says, "As He is, so are we in this world." Yeah. So the expectation should rise up in every believer. See, there's no mm-hmm. difference between someone who's seen a lot of miracles and someone who hasn't seen any miracles, that's except they there's an expectancy that's been built by reading the word of God, studying the word of God, being around people who have testimony of seeing things and beginning to build that anticipation going like, God, you've done that for them. So you can do that for me. You've allowed them to lay, you know, you've given us scriptures like believers lay hands on the sick and they shall recover yeah. that that applies to every believer if you want to see a miracle just you're and you're a believer if you've been born again you have the power in your hands to go lay hands on the sick and see them they are going to get well you just have to believe that and so is it faith is it the word is it what it's 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 like Denison said it's 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 a combination of all of it. it's the goodness of God flowing through you to somebody else and God shows up and does the miraculous. Yeah. This expectation is actually faith, Fred. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Faith yeah, comes I, by I, hearing, I, hearing I, by I, the word I, of God. Denison, yeah. I like the way when Fred first introduced me to Denison, one of the first things I identified about um, Denison was that he declared the will of God when he was talking about his healing and he mentioned this today and you know we can't just skip over these things why is this man getting such fantastic um, healing results well he declares that it's God's will to be healed you know exactly. most most of these people they're using a cop out um, by by declaring God's ability God can heal you tonight well who cares you know big deal I want to know whether he will heal me tonight. And so you need to be, if you're a minister of the mm-hmm. gospel, mm-hmm. you need to be stating what God's will is. If I can just quickly just make, I, I took a couple of notes on what Denison said. Great, great response, Denison, because Denison didn't have any, any preparation, any time <laughs> to prepare for this. Um, he, Denison said, I didn't know where their faith was. You know, mm. I, I, let me point out to you, Jesus didn't know where their faith was. Mm. Jesus, he's, you know, Denison talked about the woman with the issue of, of blood. Denison, uh, uh, Jesus was in the same situation. He wasn't operating in his divinity. Everything that he did has to be, had to be duplicatable by us, like, right? Yeah. So, De- yeah. so Jesus is looking for the point of contact. The centurion, his point of contact was only say the word, right? Mm. Mm. The woman with the issue of the blood, her point of contact was, if only I can touch the hem of his garment. You think about it. She actually did it. That's when she got healed, right? Um, You can look at every single one of them. So what was Jesus doing? He was looking for, I call it a point of contact, he was looking yeah. for a statement of faith, something out of their mouth that he can grab hold of. And probably the poorest one was the man that said, um, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Well, he ignored the second part of that statement. Jesus, the guy had given him enough to operate by saying, Lord, I believe. <laughs> he had told him only believe. Anyway, I could keep on going on and on and on with this, but I just find Denison's ministry just, it's totally different to mine. I don't have a healing ministry. And when I listen to this guy, I just, I just glean. I I, I mean, yes, I've seen healing miracles. I I can testify of that at at my hand, you know, Jesus is the healer, but through my hands. And it's just such a humbling experience to see somebody heal. In my, in this case, I, I can tell you about a guy, a, 
an American um, Marine uh, who had diabetes and um, I laid hands on his ankles, which were green with with gang with not gangrene, what do you call it? diabetes? Um, they were dead and and yeah, he received uh, healing and um, yeah. he's 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 powering on today and is still walking in Praise divine. God. Praise God. Praise God. See there? Yeah. Believers. Yeah. Believers. We lay hands you on know, the I was gonna add I was gonna add something at the end of what I was sharing with you. Uh, about those testimonies in writing this book spending five years with it it has it is changing my life it it's it just keeps touching me at the core of my being and it's humbling to read it and uh i just keep asking god god i don't want to get proud with this you know and so he's just just humble yourself before me you know and so I, I like to just humble myself. It is humbling to read the, the same chapters over and over, making corrections. I said, God, I just want this to come out as excellent and beautiful and glorifying and thanks, thankful to you, Lord, and because I, I want you to be the central theme in this, every story. And, and so it, it's, it's, been, it's been a real journey. And... Um, Every time I think about, I go to it to pick up my computer and start working on it. It's like something, an energy comes into me. And it's, uh, it's really, I, anyway, I'm just saying that the thing that's happened, I think, is my life has changed radical, radically to where I know that the next 20 years of my life, I'm, 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 I know I'm called to do this and I'll not just write, but to preach and travel and go into whatever remote regions or even back to the States and around the churches there, because I've seen awesome results in the States, but I don't see anybody really picking up with that. So I wanna go back and start doing some teaching and healing seminars. So I can maybe train or equip and give people a copy of my ebook or whatever you know they want, but uh, it, it's been a, a, a lovely journey. I mean, it's some, I, I'm sitting here sometimes and I just start laughing. Other times I weep with joy and gladness and gr gratitude for the changed life that it produces in people. So many lives change. And I don't know how that's being multiplied out into the, into the formula that God gives us, you know, sow a seed and it will multiply, grow up and multiply and bear fruits. So believe that as it is yeah it's a, it's good though thank mm -hmm. you for letting me share with you guys i i mean i really appreciate it i literally i'm sitting in my office i hardly ever get out of this room <laughs> we we go outside you know you got to put a mask on it's oh, wow. crazy so anyway pretty crazy i don't stuff. care i don't care go for a walk with jesus you know <laughs> there you go there you go you know, it, it doesn't matter what kind of situations we find ourselves in. If we begin to put our mind, it says, you know, focus upon the goodness of God. Um, yeah. Something will well up inside of us. That compassion will come and our eyes will be set on somebody that has a need and we'll see um, that need and, and go and minister to it. Uh, if you If you set your thoughts on thoughts of God or the word of God, then things begin to, you know, it's, it's the voice of God begins to, to move in your being. I think Paul said it really well. It says, I live, we, we, we live and move and have our being through him, through, through Christ. And it, man, it's, that's a powerful thought to, 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 to become the hands, the feet, and utilize the mind of Christ and live not our lives, but his life in these bodies that we have. That is an ultimate purpose, I think, 
to allow him to do the same ministry that he would do if he was here physically like he was when he was here physically, but do it through us. Can you imagine the, the, the intensity of the miraculous if every believer could grab hold of that and actually begin to function in the things mm -hmm. that we've been given and recognize yeah. that the goodness of God is on upon us. Wow. Yeah. We wow. we are living. I was reminded of a of a place in the scriptures. You're talking about the goodness of God, uh, Fred, in uh, 104, Psalm 145, verse six and seven, eight and nine. He says, Men shall speak of the might of your awesome acts. And I will declare your greatness. They shall utter the memory of your great goodness and shall sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger, great in mercy. The Lord is good to all and his tender mercies are over all his works. I just, you know, twice there in those couple three verses the goodness of God is mentioned and it's just you know I'm that's one thing I'm discovering in the word of God it's just I can't open a page anywhere whether it's in the law or wherever and uh, I, it reminds me of the goodness of God because yeah. if I look at the law I don't get discouraged anymore I don't I don't feel like it's futile anymore because Jesus fulfilled the law for me in my place and gave me the righteousness of God in himself. That's another reason we need to partake of him is yeah. we're partaking of, of his righteousness. And uh, so that's what I've been discovering in the word is that, you know, God spoke to me probably, oh, 10 years ago or so. And he said, make friends with my word. And I'm saying, God, how do I do that? And he said, well, how do you make friends with anybody? It's been done. <laughs> <laughs> like like as though the word was a person and the word is a person the yeah. word became flesh and lived among us and so as i began to read the word i began mm. to say okay i want to see jesus in this mm. somehow i want to see jesus and the holy spirit comes alongside with us and lifts up the burden and he begins he lifts the veil off of us and he reveals something to me yeah, absolutely and he does it to anybody that if we'll just get in the word and uh, so I, I'm just, that's, he, he's putting a thrill in my heart. It's, it's just exciting to look through anywhere in his word, uh, the end of Revelations to the beginning of Genesis. You know, he's, he's right there speaking to us and he's wanting to reveal his goodness to us. And I believe David could see his goodness and his mercy and compassion and favor. So. Praise God, man! I'm glad. I'm glad I got on this show with you, Fred, today. I'm I'm working myself up. I'm getting excited. That's kind of part of it. But uh, you know, I, I was going to mention one other little facet uh, that my wife, uh, she operates in uh, in in and just uh, a supernatural ability to just ask God for the simple stuff. I lost, oh. I lost myself. Where is that? You know, and, and five minutes later, the Holy Spirit will tell her right where it is. And she just goes and gets it or whatever. And she just, yeah. even, even these, oh, even good. the simplest of things, God cares about our life. Uh, I prayed <laughs> one time for a lady to, uh, it, it, that, that had a, a you know, I called her, called out a person that had a hangnail, you know, on their big toe. <laughs> they came forward, and boy, I mean, it was awful, it was gross, you know, and, and God healed, took the pain away, and just, you know, it, the, even little things, God, God's goodness is even in the little bitty thing. The moment that you look up and you see a little flower that's alongside the road with a little beam of light coming and just watching it glorify God in the presence of the light that's coming in it in the freshness of the morning. What, a, you know, I mean, he's good, folks. He's good, 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 good. Speaking of good, you guys are great. I'm so 
thankful for you to be with us tonight and uh, I've enjoyed this discussion and uh, so we're going to have to do it some more and do it again and again but uh, for tonight we probably need to kind of wrap it up I think we're getting into into a little bit of lengthiness here so I'm gonna gonna close so anyway goodbye and good night to Australia my two Australian friends at the <laughs> Are, are online this morning for them and this evening for me and uh perhaps uh, mr jones can can join us and uh and put in, in the next go around we'll try to get our coordination a little bit better next time that's on me but anyway once again i want to remind you uh, our audience that you're the third dimension as as gary often says that third dimension that makes this podcast, not just uh, talking heads, talking to each other, but you're a part of this. You're a vital. If you would type in some questions or if you would uh, fill us some uh, input, that really does help and it really does let you tie into uh, what we're doing here. So um, once again, we have this prayer line that's available so that you can be ministered to not only just by word, but by by folks that can pray with you and agree with you and all that. So that number is 806-338-2929. So use that number to call 806-338-2929. Once again, guys, thanks so much. And we just uh, love you both. And God, God bless you and good night. So we're going to sign off, and, and uh, next week, if you will chime in to uh, at the same time, same station, seven o'clock on uh, Thursday evening, we're gonna we're gonna have some more good things ready, rip roaring, ready to go. <laughs> so just keep uh, clang, clinging back in on us here, and uh, like I said, write us, write us, let us know what you're thinking, let us know, know where you're listening or watching, and that does really does make a big difference and helps us know kind of how our little analytics are telling us the truth or not, but uh, kind of verify the real, the real life verification of a person typing something in and saying hello or asking us a question is a lot more valuable than the analytic things that uh, Google gives us. So <laughs> we appreciate your input. God bless you. Good night and good luck to, uh, to a, every endeavor of your, your life. And remember the goodness of God is what leads men to repentance. So just be, just, just get into the goodness of God and let the goodness of God flow out of you and you will influence men. You will be seen by someone and they'll say, what is it that makes you so different? And that difference is Christ in you, hope of glory. So God bless you. Good night, gentlemen. We'll see you guys you. next go around. Bye-bye. If you enjoyed the show today, be sure and get the download and the uh, show notes that we have available for you. If you agree that this is place to be, invite your friends. Use those little buttons to uh, connect us to your Facebook friends and others. And if you have not subscribed, do it today. Check out our free downloads. This is the Fred Hughes Show, signing off.